All right, everyone, welcome back to the episode two of the series, the playlist for um, how to redo your rockers and cab corners. Today, we are going to be taking out the carpet of the inside of the truck and taking out all the interior moldings. We're leaving the doors on for this episode. Um, that's gonna be coming more closely to when we're ready to cut out and do the rockers themselves. So let's do this. So I actually have no clue how to do this or what I'm doing. So we're just gonna start taking some of this plastic trim off and it is just yummy to deal with here. So we're gonna start taking this plastic trim off and get going after it here. Already broke a piece, that's great. Now I will say if you're wondering how to get to this point ugh, of the install or un or removal of your carpet, because this is the video will be labeled how to remove your carpet. If you're wondering how to get to this point, um, Watch the video link below or on this playlist, you'll see how we remove the Silverado seats. So here I'm just gonna start taking the plastic off and uh, hopefully we'll see what everything starts to look like when we get this taken off. All right, now don't harp on me too bad because I've actually never done this before. So uh, hopefully body guys don't get crazy at me in this whole process, but any advice along the way, I would highly appreciate it. So, especially if anybody's watching who does body work, advice would be great. All right, so this one's gonna be a little, little tricky. Oh, we've got our first, first issue here. We need a Phillips screwdriver. Some Chuck's gonna be looking like a Jeep here soon with the, when, once the doors come off. So, I've already taken this off when I did uh, my other thing. So there's supposed to be two screws here. There we go. All right, so. How? Ooh, I don't know if I have a Torx bit that size. I may have to leave these hang and then get some Torx bits. I don't think I have, I don't think I have a Torx bit that size. Again, not the way to use the tool but it is designed to help you in situations like this. I don't have the Torx picks for this size, so let's go ahead and see if I can just get off with my twin grip. Seriously? You wanna know why I have these pliers? This is why I have these freaking pliers. Like, holy shit. You have got to be kidding me. Just because I'm in a pinch, it's helping me out in a pinch. What is my pinch? I'm trying to get the video done for you guys. So it looks like I have gotta take the seatbelt ratchet off and also this one down here. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and leave this for now and I'll go ahead and order some Torx bits. I actually do not have some because I don't have like impact rated ones or anything. So I'll order some on Amazon, see what I get. Maybe I can get some of those Lexivon ones that uh, of the tools of the e-torx that I use. So let's take a look, we'll see. But that's not gonna stop us. We're gonna go ahead and continue on. I'm just gonna keep this off. Now to the other side. <sighs> it's good stuff right there. Again, bubbler, where you at? All right, so take this one off. Hopefully this one goes a little smoother. That one's way smoother than the last one. I didn't break anything that time. Good toss. Take this out. It's going very, very easily. I got wires going here. I wonder what the wires are going across for. Maybe I won't be able to. It's almost like you gotta kind of not be worried to uh, break it. It's kind of how you gotta kind of treat it, it seems like here. And I'm, I'm not breaking anything, it's just all plastic. All right, so oh, the back piece. Screwdriver, see, there's two here now. Right up on here. Get in there. Hell yeah, get in there. Hell yeah. And then obviously when I take these screws out, put them back in. You don't want to, it's hot. Damn, it's 
tight. Now, this might be weird because of how I had to angle the camera, but now we take our cap vents, kind of just basically get them nice and loose like this and start taking our carpet off. Yay. This is gross. Ooh, moisture. That's not good. See, this is why this is sometimes a good time you're gonna wanna do this. Cause I got a lot of moisture in here. Lots and lots of moisture. This is no bueno. We don't want this moisture in here, guys. We don't, oop, don't do that. Ooh, forgot one thing here. This has gotta come off. This is probably eight mils. Eight mil it is, right? No, 10 mil. I'm not reusing this because I don't use the, this is the bracket for the um, spare tire jack to, jack to jack your, if you have a flat tire. I will not be reusing this. All right, carpet. Yucky. Hopefully we can just pull it out. Hopefully it's not caught up in anything. This smells gross, by the way. I mean, this absolutely reeks. This is honestly, absolutely disgusting. I highly recommend this. All right, next. So we've got obviously here, this is your um, duct work to send the cold air back to the back seat. This is gonna be the next thing we're gonna take out. Now, thankfully though, this is just kind of pried up in here. So it just slides out just like that. There's no, nothing really holding this down too much. Now, we're gonna go ahead and take um, this wiring harness off. Not a fan that this wiring harness goes straight across. So I'll probably reroute this in the future because I do, and I think I can, looking at what, I ha what we have right now, right here, I think I can rhino line, um, I think I can rhino line this, or, or raptor line this whole thing, and that would be great, because that's truly what I want. And, uh, and able to do that, I can't have this harness going through there. Um, I could probably take it back, because it looks like it goes from here, up into here. So I'll probably, just, I'll probably just take it out and take it back that way and then reinstall it once, uh, once we rhino line. I, don't have, I guess I don't have to reroute it. Kind of talking myself through this right now with you guys uh, because I've never done this before. So I guess I don't have to reroute it because the seats will be back in here and so will bees don't. And so will the center console. So I'll just basically undisconnect it over here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, perfect. It looks like we have a ground here. It's interesting in these vehicles, that is a 10 millimeter as well. Um, how many grounds are just kind of everywhere? So pay attention to that, especially when you're doing this process, if you're restoring, um, I'm doing a cab on restore, restoration you could call it. Um, so pay attention to these grounds when you're restoring it um, and try and clean up every single ground you see. So I'm gonna go get a cool plastic tool remover and uh, Take the next steps. So hopefully you can see it in the video. There's just all these little plastic retainer clips on these studs over here. Um, I'll show you on that side because they're the same thing once I get over there. But simply just gonna go ahead and remove all these. This door, this little clip, there's a clip over here. Here are those studs, they're really nasty. Um, geez, really, really nasty. But anyways, these were just sitting on here like that. I just used my plastic pry tool and just pry them up, come up really easy. Again, we've got another ground screw right here. Gonna have to take this off. And then also inside here, you have a, uh, 
door wiring harness connector we have to take out. Well, there's two of them. That's great. So I'm gonna label those. This was the bottom one, hold on. All right, we're just bringing out the quarter inch stuff. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and label this. Ew. Oh, that's so gross. And how I'm gonna label this is, I'm gonna put a piece of blue tape on the bottom of that connector or the female end, and then I'm gonna put a piece of blue tape over the male end. I could stop there, um, but I'm gonna also do it to the black one too. Or do it to the top one, just to help me label things here. That way, there's no confusion in the future. In this type of scenario, I would recommend taking pictures if you're not familiar with working with this kind of stuff. I just do this just because it's a habit for me. So let's go ahead and assume this is probably what a 10. Sure enough, everything seems to be a 10. So there we go. Now we got that loose. Now we can go ahead and get the rest of these pried off. You've got this over here, along with this connector. If you're wondering what this is, this is the airbag. So um, yeah, hopefully nothing happens here. It's gonna scare the shit out of me if it does. All right. I don't like dealing with airbags and I have my uh, battery still plugged in, so yeah. But anyway, so that's, that's, that's the airbag. I'm gonna put some tape over that. Look at the truck, come look at this. All this padding is wet. Cut it off, throw it over. Now, I could start taking this up, but I don't, I don't want to yet because I'm gonna get gloves on for that. I'll take the rest of the harness off. Again, it's just these plastic clips, really simple to work with. Really, really simple to work with here. Get this out of the way. Yet again, another thing we gotta take off. This is disgusting. It's full of water. It's so gross. It's so gross. Again, this is the kind of stuff that people uh, definitely don't share with you. All this little tiny stuff, I will say. I've, I'm well aware that people just seem to not, not share this kind of information with, and that's why wh that stud is completely gone. Oh, there it is. It's not gone. It's just really rusty. Um, I'm not really sure why people don't share this kind of information with other people, but um, yeah, I'm gonna show you the whole process of this because once we get, I'm not gonna, once we, once we get this out, I'm gonna kind of just get more in depth with you guys on everything you need to do here. Um, again, we've got another connector over here, just like on that side. We've got another ground, but there's like two grounds that come off of this one. So um, again, we're gonna, we're gonna take this pad out now. I'm gonna leave this alone, because this again has, is tied into like airbags and stuff like that. So um, seat detection, everything like that. But um, we're gonna go ahead now and rip this carpet pad out, because that was my next step that I wanted to do. Because everything is loose on this. If you can still see me, I'm just popping off those plastic tabs over here for, uh, this is your rear defrost. That's what you got over here. Also, I think this right here is a culprit to uh, all that water getting in my cab. You gotta make sure you have good cab vents, you guys. Seriously, this is, this is huge. And um, having loose cab vents like this is, is no bueno. So I'm gonna start ripping this out. And it's pulling out just like the carpet. I've also decided to not put gloves on. So, ugh, wish me luck. Oh, it stinks so bad. There she be. I'm definitely going to let the truck dry this, dry, let this dry out in the truck. This definitely needs to dry out. This is, this is bad, this is nasty. All right, so now the next step would be realistically um, to take out all my molding here um, and this I gotta take this off but that's not a big deal that that can wait uh, when I go to take the doors off should I take it off now I have them I have the stuff I'll just take them off now 10 or 12 10 
All right, this is what I'm talking about right here. These are 10 millimeters. Just the hand, the old shit handle is what I grew up on knowing what it's called. These are barely in there. My goodness, wow. I guess that's not a bad thing. It makes it easy to take off. There, that easy. Then I would highly suggest putting these back in. Just so you don't lose them. Again, the only reason why I'm taking these even off is um, because when I come to do the door seals, because I got to take the door seals off. Um, when I come to take the door seals off, at least this will already be off and uh, it'll just make the next step a little bit easier. I have the time now to take them off and they're just two 10 mils and I have the stuff with me right now. Well, three 10 millimeter bolts and I have, uh, have the stuff with me right now. So I might as well, might as well take care of it right now, you know, so. Very, very simple to do. That easy. We've got an absolute pile of parts near here now. In regards to this, I'm gonna do a little research on this before I take it or touch it apart. You can see how nasty it is. So I'm hoping I can just disconnect it, take it off and kind of clean it up. Um, I'm gonna do some research on this and hopefully I can just take it out. I'll probably disconnect the batteries and maybe then I'll take it off once I disconnect the batteries. So I'll let you know in a little bit. So I disconnected the batteries and that is your airbag control module. That's exactly what it is. So I disconnected the batteries. I'm also gonna let them sit for a little bit before I touch anything. Um, because if you have any capacitors and stuff in that control model, module, it'll hold a little voltage. So we're gonna go ahead and let that sit for a little bit. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and remove that control module. By the way, quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional camp mechanic. That's the whole purpose of DIY Diesel is to show you, hey, with the right guidance, you can go ahead and do a project like this. So far, to be honest with you, with taking my seats out and taking my carpet out, it's been really simple. So I would highly suggest at this point, if your truck's really old and you know your carpet's never been replaced, order a new carpet and pad, take your seats out, spend a half a day, take the seats out, rip that all out and go ahead and replace your padding and your carpet and also your cab vents while you're at it. You're gonna thank me in the long run because one, it's gonna be quieter if you put some like kill mat down and then put some carpet back down. I'm still not 100% sure if we're going to be able to uh, Raptor line the bottom of the truck bed. I love workbenches, work trucks with like the vinyl um, flooring. So I'm either going to maybe go that route and try and find some vinyl flooring if all possible. So now it looks like here we just have three 10 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. Well, no, nuts. Now you can either go ahead and just take this and kind of just leave this, hang this loose and leave this whole wiring harness nice and loose. Um, or you can take this completely off for the control module and either replace your control module or test this airbag control module. Um, but I'm not gonna advise you to take this off uh, because you may forget it. The only reason I'm going to take it off is because I am going to replace this and then I'll put a new one on when I reinstall it. But if you take this off, you need to put this back on. This is your airbag control module. It's extremely, extremely important. And remember, before you mess with this, and I shouldn't have even messed with that over there, take the batteries off. There you go. That's how you remove your airbag control module. That's disgusting. So there you have it. Now, if you were going to be just replacing your carpet, you could just go ahead, put the carpet back in here, the padding down, put the new carpet back in here, and then go ahead and put everything back in its place like this harness and everything. So it's really not that hard, you guys. It's really, really not that hard. I just have a mess of shit to clean up now. So that being said, we've been very blessed today with the beautiful weather that we had here. Please make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. Do not forget to do that. Comment below any tips or tricks that you have. Like I said, any body work guys in the future that we got going on this whole process, I would greatly appreciate it. As all the professional mechanics that do follow me, I appreciate all your guys' advice and I respect you guys gratefully. But please make sure you guys understand that I do upload on Mondays and Wednesdays, occasionally on a Friday as well or Saturday. So make sure you check the weekends. Occasionally they might see something, but this process has officially really, really began. So I'm excited. Stay tuned for more to come because boy, we've got a lot coming. Have a great night.